So hello everyone. Now we have the pleasure to welcome Edith Le Tournel, who is the CEO of eFrontech, a consultancy and service provider that supports the implementation of digital solutions for customer relations and um, uh, data intelligence. So previously, Edith had various executive positions within big companies such as Orange and France Telecom. She is a graduate from Ecole Polytechnique, Telecom Paris, and uh, she holds an executive MBA degree from HEC Paris. Today, Edith will share her experience on taking over a company. So thank you very much, Edith, for being with us today. Um, and now the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be with you. And I'd like to thank you, Julia, and all the team of HEC to have invited me to this event. Uh, it's a great pleasure to share with you my experience and I hope give you another aspect of women entrepreneurship. First of all, I will present myself. And then after that, I will, uh, of course, share with you my experience. And I hope, uh, I hope, um, part, uh, take um, take uh, the time to to, to share some uh, uh, some achievements of this experience. So, um, if you can go to the next slide, you have already presented me, so it's very simple for me to just to, to, to mention I have an engineer background and also business, and it's uh, one point I'm very proud of uh, to be a part, uh, to, be, um, to have been an uh, 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 alumni from Polytechnique, Telecom Paris also, and of course EMBA HEC. I spent more than, in fact, 30 years uh, in IT and telecom fields in our age group and uh, so I know my present experience but more than 20 years in the orange group in various experiences in IT project management and um, I, will, I will just say that it was the beginning for me when I began to work for an important IT project in the so it was a uh, the, an important opportunity to to get uh, the basis, I would say, of IT services. And after that, I became a, a C, CIO. It was also interesting. Then I moved to finance field and became management controller in order to professionalize the structure and develop a, a financial, financial KPI for all businesses of uh, this subsidiary. And then join Orange to lead a business unit dedicated to uh, communications by satellite. And uh, this was a challenging experience that in you know, restructuring and transforming this uh, business unit that led me to follow the uh, HEC uh, Executive MBA in 2001. Um, a great experience that helped me to move to business and sales responsibilities. After that, I will, I will no, I'm, I'm still uh, presenting all this competency because I think it's important to explain why I moved to a takeover uh, project. Uh, so I work in the marketing and sales department and I was head of sales in the enterprise market for Paris-based corporate companies and finally learned uh, consulting services in the Orange subsidiary. So all, with all these competencies, I am I reflected um, and uh, get progressively a strong motivation to become entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, and this is why I had a sort of kind of preparation and reflection during two years, getting more and more information, beginning training, thinking about and defining my project. Uh, it was also a time to get more determination, conviction, and motivation that would be useful during the following process. The first choice was to make, to, to leave Orange Group in order to be fully dedicated to the, this church. And this was an, in, an uncertain uh, way, in a certain way, a step into the unknown. And so, um, if you can go to the to, to following slide. So 
So my project was um, to to buy a digital IT services company around 40 to 50 people. This this was uh, in fact um, uh, what was um, the principal aim of uh, my uh, the, the main project and. Um, the main point for me was to, to know and get a good a understanding of the business and company I would buy, so as I could bring value, be completely part of the company, and help develop it, and also, of course, diminish the risks of the takeover project. Um, one of my main, uh, another main teaching of my search was um, that I had to, to have um, various networking and consulting to help me improve and fine tune this um, uh, ideal target that the company I will buy. And this was uh, done with the help of and consulting advice of many people. First of all, a group of pairs, and the HSC Openers is a um, um, part of the HSC Alumni Entrepreneur Group which is dedicated for, to help uh, people like me at that time who were looking for uh, a business to, to buy. And that was uh, very helpful uh, in my case and was, and was the, uh, by the way, a part of the, um, I was um, leading to the group and to, to help to, uh, to contribute to the uh, dynamic uh, uh, of this group. And uh, I also um, exchange with um, uh, a, con a specialist in the takeover uh, project in order to help me to better know the environment, the process of buying a financial legal issue and uh, build, for instance, some business, business plans and so have a, a more uh, a professional approach. And, of course, to buy a company, I was accompanied by a legal specialist and certified accountant. Edith? Uh, oui? Yes, can you hear me? Just, uh, is it possible to just a little stop uh, for a moment because we have a technical problem? We, we try to yes. find back like the slides. Thank you. So you don't see my slides? Yes, exactly. Just, um, So I think that now it's all right. Okay. It's okay, yes. Thank you. So yes. yes. I will go to slide four. That if you are okay. You want me to follow to, to go up? Yes. All right. That's yes. perfect. Thank so you. Uh, I think an important thing I would I'd like to share, to share is that it was, I encountered the, the same difficulties as for the a company creation because I had no um, real legitimacy as in the role of CEO, but anyway, strong ex experience. Yes, the lessons from the research process, process. No, it's a slide four, four lessons. Um, same difficulties, not is the, the slide before, please. Yes, exactly. I know legitimacy in the CEO as a CEO, but strong experience, as I mentioned. And um, I, would, I had difficulties to, to find the right targets because at that time, a lot of media information you can find, you could find, said you, you, there were a lot of small businesses to sell, but that was a mistake because these companies were, for the great majority, too small for me. In different sectors as the one I look for, and in particular in the IT services, there was and there still remains a strong competition in the, uh, the acquisition of small IT companies. And in reality, every time, uh, every time I was well advanced in the process and I began to get attention from the seller of the company, I was in competition with established companies that would be the best bidder. 
most of the time because of the price they pay, uh, more confidence they brought uh, to the uh, seller. So I studied a lot of companies to be sold before be, during more than two years. And um, a few were studied very much in details to make a global proposal, including financial and uh, uh, business plan to present my takeover plan. And I faced many failures and exceptions. Of course, when you fail and you have worked a lot without success, you have to be able to bounce back and be a day to look at for a new target. That's also what I learned, by the way. So this, the next slide, I will share with you lessons from this search approach, because it was, this was clearly a challenging experience. It increased my resilience capabilities. It helped me, it teached me to remain persistent and determined, not to discourage after a failure and keep a focus on the same objective to reach. Do it same as doing a creation from scratch. I, I, I would say, when you have to adapt to your environment, adapt to your initial idea, your business model. I clearly understood the, also the importance of finance, finance and of course being capable of, of build, to build a financial business plan to, in order to look for an investment fund or banks to accompany me. Having made it for a few times, that helped me to succeed at the end and of course, the importance of the, the strategic and operational issues in the business plan I proposed. And after the, uh, the, this good preparation, uh, this was a good preparation, sorry, to become a, a real manager of a small company. Because you know, you learn how to face difficulties and to uh, to find the solutions and to be uh, as as more as persistent as necessary. And one more point I learned too is was the resistance to stress because it's, it was not so easy uh, as you may you may wish you may guess it was uh, sometimes stressing the situation. So after all this time. I succeeded in convincing the foundator of Ifontel to sell me its company in a relatively short process that prevented me from being in competition with other buyers. And also I succeeded in convincing an investment fund and two banks to accompany me in financing this acquisition and implicated three key managers to consolidate management teams. The takeover was done end of 2011 with an the ABO to buy Ifrontech. So let's talk a little about Ifrontech and slide, slide uh, next slide. If you can guess. So Ifrontech is a um, CRM um, service, IT services. It's a consulting, uh, consulting firm now and uh, dedicated to uh, the installation of marketing CRM and BI data uh, system applications for large companies. We are, this company was and is still, of course, in this dynamic market that's with big challenges uh, facing uh, for these companies, for all companies, I would say. And um, this was, there was a strong performance of this company, but also this, there was quite issues and negotiations that was that were difficult but resolved. That's all. At that time I wrote it, the company was around 50 people with a turnover a little more than uh, 5 million euro. And as I mentioned, key managers were associated to this uh, takeover. So next slide, I, I would say that the first step in the company were very important as uh, it's uh, quite natural, naturally. Um, this, this was the beginning of a new story for me and uh, for the company, of, of course, also. I wanted to structure, but um, I had to take time. What, uh, it, it was 
Mm -hmm. They were no, no necessary, necessity to have it and wanted to develop it also. And I take, took time to, to, to make it progressively. And, uh, one, some difficulties, of course, uh, but it's uh, quite normal, were found on the road. Um, for instance, two associates, uh, two, two management, uh, two people of the management left uh, during last year, uh, the, the beginning, I would say, of, the, of this adventure. And we have uh, also strategical and financial issues that were sometimes complicated, but uh, finally were solved. And of course, sales, I would say mainly sales uh, issues that we we'll, uh, that had we had to we had to face. But anyway, um, uh, this uh, journey this um, had, has allowed us to, to, to develop. And uh, if I can, we can go to the next slide. To, um, uh, we are now around 100 consultants with a turnover of more than 12, 10 million euros, so it's uh, quite uh, around the double of the size. Um, we have made a strategical shift from uh, uh, the unical, uh, original services that we uh, proposed in the Oracle field to so other fields uh, such as Salesforce and Microsoft uh, uh, fields that are very uh, dynamic for the moment and it's very, very useful to, to help developing the, the company. Uh, so develop marketing and BI services and as well as consulting services. So very uh, diversi diversification of the company that's very useful now to, to develop more and more uh, in front tech. And of course, uh, evolution in the organization management field to help to the company to grow. And we plan to be uh, 150 within uh, 2025. With uh, now a uh, situation of tight, total financial independence, that's a good point in order to, to be, of course, independent, but also, but also to uh, more or to, to have the opportunity to, to develop a new, new other financial project. For instance, um, merging acquisition of new, uh, new companies. Well, that's, that's all for my testimony, for, my, for sharing with you. But I hope this has uh, uh, bring you some new points about the takeover of a company and maybe I, would, I can answer to some of the, your questions if it's too long. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Edith, for, for this uh, very interesting presentation. And uh, so now I guess we have some time left for, for a few questions. And so the first one is, um, what were the advantages for you to take over an existing company um, over creating a totally new one from scratch? Ah, a big, ish, big question. Um, I would say that was uh, it was easier for me maybe to after all this um, experience to to lead uh, an existing uh, already existing company rather than building it from scratch. Uh, especially because I was not a specialist in IT or services and consulting services, and um, I had spend most of the time in the telecom uh, industry so I, I was not uh, ready to uh, to create a startup in telecom for instance and so it was um, easier for me to to get uh, to, to to get advantage of my competency in order to uh, take over buy a company and develop it that's the main point okay thank you uh, we have another question concerning women leadership. So how to be a leader as a woman uh, in an organization where the majority of employees are men? Yes, that's also an important issue. I, I would say I, I've always been working in 
kids and in organizations where women were uh, not the majority, uh, of course, uh, in technical um, uh, in technical fields, you, you, you find many uh, few few women, especially in management positions. So I was already in a range group in this situation, and um, for me it was not different becoming uh, uh, CEO of Ifontech. And uh, uh, fortunately, I had no problems with this point within Ifontech. Um, my uh, uh, colleagues, my associates, recognized me uh, as well as if I was uh, a man. There was indeed no difference. And uh, one point in Ifontech is important: it's the diversity and the um, openness to uh, equality between men and women. Even if we, we are, must admit there are not, uh, not, not uh, as many women as men in, uh, in the IT field. So there was, that was actually not a problem, but even if I, I can guess it's not so easy for anyone. Yes, true. Um, Another question is, uh, what advice uh, can you give to a young woman to feel more confident while presenting her business project uh, to a male board of investors? Uh, I would say that there is no, uh, no reason that a woman would not was, could encounter uh, more difficulties than a man, but anyway, uh, most uh, women had to be self -conf more self-confident and work on it, for instance, with uh, pairs, with um, uh, exercise and gaining experience in this uh, and practice this kind of exercise because before, uh, and before meeting, for instance, financial investors. But there is no reason, on the contrary, uh, women are most of the time uh, appreciated for their uh, qualities. And of course, uh, it means also that you have to convince and to be, uh, to, to be professional and um, self, uh, um, uh, so to, to be uh, as performant as you can be. Okay. No, not, to, not to be shy, not to <laughs> hesitate, you have to go. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, and um, another question is how to uh, negotiate when you take over a company and uh, could you tell us a bit more about your experience uh, like uh, within the finance and the timeline? Um, uh, once, first of all, you, you have to, to have a, a good Knowledge of finance, I would say the, the basis, of course. Uh, um, I had uh, previously had uh, some experience in that field that helped me, but I, I also um, made progress in the uh, operational uh, field and on the funding process. That's uh, very important, important in the takeover project. Um, for, for my part, I I had very much in, invested in my from my side. Uh, that was um, possible because I had uh, some uh, some money with me uh, and I, uh, that I couldn't have uh, proposed if I was uh, if I many years before. So it had to to be uh, uh, in a situation to to buy that kind of company. Okay, thank you very much. And I think we have uh, one last question. Um, could you tell us, uh, Edith, uh, one of your best moments you have lived as a woman entrepreneur? Ah. <laughs> I, I would say it was, uh, it was the acquisition of Frontech because it was so difficult and maybe, uh, maybe you have, uh, uh, you have perceived that you are I expect the, the, the difficulty and the duration of the process. So, um, having uh, performed the, the acquisition of the contact was a, a great moment for me. 
as an entrepreneur, uh, as a woman entrepreneur. And uh, of course, if, if it was only the beginning of a new adventure, it was uh, a main accomplishment, I would say. Okay. Thank you very much, Edith, for, for the time that you spent with us, because I know as a woman entrepreneur that you don't have a lot of time. But thank you again for, for, for being today with us. Thank Goodbye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So now we're going to have a break until 20 past three. And we will have next Clara Audrey, who is a partner in a venture capital fund. So stay tuned and see you very soon.